Right now, we're in the midst of a global pandemic, and the coronavirus is having a massive impact, not just on people's health, but on the economy, on way of life, on events, on finances, on jobs and schools and everything else. And that raises a really important question for us who want to understand life and understand the Bible. And that question is, why the coronavirus? Why diseases like the coronavirus? Uh, this question goes beyond just this immediate disease to things as simple as the common cold or uh, the seasonal flu, or it raises questions about bigger diseases like cancer. Like, why cancer? Why AIDS? Why, whatever it is, why are there diseases like the coronavirus? If God made a good world, then why are we so infected by diseases both common and everyday and lethal as well? One answer that is sometimes given and sometimes even those of us who are followers of Jesus just assume is the full answer is, well, these things are just part of life, right? Like, the cold is just part of life. The seasonal flu is just part of life. And as awful, awful as cancer is, cancer is just part of life. It just happens, right? Coronavirus is just another strain of the, the same sort of things. It's just part of life. And in one sense, that's true. But it's not the full biblical answer to the question. Um, it's not really the full answer as part of a biblical worldview. In the Bible, God made a good world a perfect world where everything was right. And in fact, when God first made the world, there were no diseases. The common cold didn't exist. The flu didn't exist. Certainly the coronavirus didn't exist. There was no cancer, right? You can even extend that beyond disease to other things that we think of that are just part of life that are bad. Think of natural disasters. When God first made the good world, there, there were no hurricanes. There were no tornadoes that wiped out neighborhoods. Uh, there was no really anything like disease and death and natural disasters and the devastation we see in our world that we think of as, well, you know, it's just part of life. Well, those didn't exist when God first made the world. God made a good world, according to the Bible, and everything worked right in it. And these sorts of things weren't part of that good world. So what happened? Well, what happened in the worldview of the Bible is that in some way, maybe we don't fully understand the chain of connection and the chain of command from God to humans to the natural world was somehow disordered, broken, ruptured in some sort of way, according to the Bible. And that happened when human beings rebelled against their creator, broke faith with their creator, and were disloyal to him. And somehow that disloyalty, what the Bible in some instances calls sin, it's also just faithlessness and disloyalty. In some sense, that disloyalty and that sin disordered and disruptured the relationship between God, humans, and the natural world. And that has led to all this disease and death and decay that we see in the world. And so while in one sense it's just part of the world because it's the way the world has been for a long time and it's the world that we ourselves have been born into and we're just kind of used to it, right? Just the way it is. In one sense that's the case. In another sense the Bible says, but it wasn't supposed to be that way. That, that these sorts of things are... Johnny come lately is onto the scene of human history and into the scene of the natural world that weren't part of the way God intended the world to be. And what that means is that when God is carrying out the work of redemption to put the world back to proper working order, it's not just human beings he's going to save. Sometimes we think of the plan of salvation as purely an individualistic human sort of thing. God's saving humans and he's going to take them away to heaven someday. But the Bible has a much full deeper, richer story that it tells than that. And so to put it in its full biblical context, God made this good world. Everything worked right. Humans broke faith with their creator and were disloyal to him. And thus the natural order is now thrown into chaos and a curse lays on the world, according to Genesis chapter 3. And the world doesn't work the way it originally did and the way God intended it to and the way it was supposed to. The goodness has been broken. Now, there's, now there is disease. Now there are things like COVID 
COVID-19, the coronavirus, right? Now there is cancer and all that. Now there are natural disasters, tornadoes and hurricanes and things like that that didn't used to be that way. What is God going to do about it? And the redemption that he's provided in Jesus actually provides a full comprehensive solution, not just to the human component, but even to the natural world component. Listen to these words from Romans chapter 8. For I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation, notice that, the natural world, the natural order, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. Again, there's some sort of connection that maybe we don't fully get between God humans and the natural order and maybe we don't fully understand but there's some order and there's some connection and so the creation is waiting for God's people to to be really restored to their proper place because that will somehow put things back to proper working order so the creation's waiting for the revealing of the sons of God verse 20 says for the creation was subjected to futility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it. And so this curse that lays on the world as a result of human rebellion. Um, so not willingly, but, in, in, but because of him who subjected it in hope that, catch this, that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves have the first fruits of the Spirit. And so we groan inwardly as we await uh, for our adoption as sons, specifically the redemption of our bodies. And so what we see in Romans chapter 8 is that redemption includes the creation, the whole natural world that things like coronavirus, things like cancer, things like natural disease, those things themselves are going to be eliminated and removed when God restores all things and when God places human beings back in their full proper relationship to creation, back when humans have a resurrected, renewed body that can never die again. In that day, when God restores all things, disease and death and all of that will be removed. And so, Coronavirus? Well, guess what? It's not really the way it's supposed to be. Coronavirus, cancer, the common cold, and really anything that ruins God's good creation is not the way it's supposed to be. And it's subject to God's redemption. God's going to remove it. God's going to eliminate it. And he's going to make all things new. And when he does, everything will be right. When there's a new heavens and a new earth, there will no longer be any diseases. There will no longer be any destruction or decay or even death because everything has been changed. Listen to these words from Revelation chapter 21. When the story comes full circle, here's what God says. Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and God's making all things new now. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God will be with them as their God. Notice that the way God walked with Adam and Eve in the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. God is restoring that. He's going to come and live with people again. And so God will be here. And listen to these words from verse 4. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death will be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the first things have passed away. I love that imagery of God like a tender-hearted father wiping away the tears from the eyes of his child and making all things new. And there's no longer death. There's no longer mourning, anything to mourn about. There's no longer crying or pain. Why? Because the first things have passed away and there's a new heavens and new earth. And so in the midst of all the chaos that this world affords, whether it's the latest strain of a virus, whether it's natural disasters that wreak havoc on neighborhoods, whether it's a collapsing economy, whether it is... Uh, cancer or any other kind of disease, whatever would destroy God's good creation will be dealt with fully and completely in the redemption brought through Jesus Christ and all things will be made new. 
I hope that encourages you as much as it encourages me. We have a great and glorious hope that God has provided. And so, my friends, live in hope. Set your eyes fully on the hope to be revealed when Christ returns and makes all things new. God bless you guys. I look forward to talking to you again soon.